In part two of our Talking Edge with Tansri Tony Fernandez, we talk about Air Asia's big ASEAN dreams and whether listing it even makes sense. China and whether he really intends to hang his red hat up and retire. Let's talk about this very big thing you talked about a couple of months ago, talking about the One Air Asia listing. You know, mm. you wanted to list everybody. Mm. It's a really ambitious goal, and I, I have to be, I'll, I'll confess, I don't get the rationale behind it because who would buy it and what's in it for like a stakeholder? We are creating One Air Asia. Right now, if you want to invest in Air Asia, mm. you uh, you can have you have two options Thailand or Malaysia Malaysia is the de facto parent company but it only gets 49 percent the goal is to create a group company deconsolidate Malaysia from the group company the group company will own hundred percent of Malaysia 45 percent of Thailand 49 percent of Indonesia so on and so forth okay. right it'll be a very clear group group structure then my dream whether I achieve it or not is something else, is to reverse all those shares into the group company. So as a shareholder of, of AirAsia Group, you own 100% of all the ASEAN airlines, right? Yeah. And hence, you are in one economic unit. You're not in 49%, 45%, etc. So we're a similar company as Ryanair or EasyJet, etc. Right now, we have 100% ASEAN com uh, Malaysian company and 49% and 45%. And it's just accounted as one line. Mm -hmm. We've started to consolidate in two companies. But really, my dream is that AirAsia Group owns 100% of all uh, ASEAN airlines. Foreign ownership, though, that's going to be the big sticky uh, thing. Of course it is. And that's, that's, that's what uh, my job is. You know, when I started, the Edge interviewed me and said, how are you going to get a license in Thailand and in Indonesia and all these places? They said it's impossible. We did it. Um, you know, you look at ASEAN, you look what's happening now. Uh, some countries, I can't mention the countries, have already said we can have a 100% license. Um, you know, roads are 100% owned by foreigners. Airports are in some places. T uh, power stations are. So, I, I, you know, airlines is another utility. Okay. So with all this, with this, this, this big parent company you're talking about, this mm. talk of dual listing, is that off now? No, yes. not at all. I mean, it might not. Might, look, let's do it first. Okay. Uh, but uh, it could be multiple listings, right? It could be a group company that's listed in Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, and Malaysia, uh, and the parent listing can be in any of those countries. I, I'm hoping by that time there'll be an ASEAN stock market. That's a very big hope. Mm. Um, hopefully, that will actually. Well, eventually there are there are investors out there who that want, want that. to take risk in ASEAN. They want to be exposed to ASEAN's growth. Okay. So ASEAN should facilitate for investors to, to provide that marketplace. There are many ASEAN companies happening. There's CIMB, that's very clearly ASEAN. Mm. Um, Axiata, who's heading that way that, that, within Malaysia. And then outside, you have Lion Group, which is from Indonesia, which is an ASEAN airline. Mm. So there are many ASEAN brands that are coming. FNN in Thailand is an ASEAN brand. Um, you know, Singaporean roots, Thai now, um, some Malaysian roots. So there will be a time. I mean, look, investors are investing in China, one billion people. One, you know, investing in India, one billion people. And ASEAN has 700 million people. Wouldn't an investor want to invest in that asset class as well? But all the countries are at different stages of growth, though. That's the main issue I think they're having. Look, I'm not a, not a politician or whatever, but mm. a lot of countries in Europe are at different stages of growth. A lot of regions in China are at different stages of growth. Okay, let's talk about China then, because Air Asia China is a whole new yeah. basket of eggs, right? Yeah. What's the plan there thus now? Well, we're point? not going to mention right now. No. Because I have many competitors. Yeah, Ooh, but okay. You know. uh, so China is, look, I mean, when you're investing in Air Asia, you have an, a fantastic ASEAN growth story, you have fantastic services business, and you have growth opportunities in India and China. There is no brand from Malaysia that has that breath, breath of, of growth. Um, just like India, it will have challenges. Just like Indonesia, it will have challenges, or Philippines, or Malaysia. But um, we have a big advantage in China because we fly to 21 destinations already, and we know the Chinese market. And so we're excited by it. We're honored that we've been given a chance. We've tied up with one of the biggest SOEs in China. 
So we're nicely placed. Wait and see. Regional listing plans. What does that look for you now, actually? Well, we wanna, we've got Malaysia and Thailand listed. Mm. We want to list Philippines and Indonesia. Then we have four tradable stocks, which hopefully can merge into one group company. All right, but what, when are you aiming for that? I, I would say uh, Indonesia is further ahead than Philippines, so maybe this year for Indonesia and Philippines first quarter. Okay, next six months left for, for 2017. Mm. What, does, what does Air Asia have planned? We believe we have tremendous value. We believe we generate a lot of cash flow. We believe we have a lot of growth opportunities. So, um, you know, next six months looks exciting. Wait and see. All right. Uh, but it looks good and uh, we're enjoying it. Uh, you know, Malaysia has to learn, Malaysian corporates have to learn that I'm criticized for 16 years, I've been criticized a lot, a lot. We've had um, our, our stock short sold, we've been accused of all kinds of things, etc., etc. But that's made us better. There's been a lot of talk about probably you, Dato Din, Retiring. Yeah. Does, does, does Tony Fernandez want to hang up his red cap, no. go it, tend a farm somewhere? No. I'd like to tend a <laughs> farm. I did look at a farm in Scotland once. No. You, I'm, would, you would build a local I'm excited. I, I got mm. lots of things to do. The, 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 the report was misquoting Din. Mm. He was saying that eventually we have to retire. And I think as an investor, you have to know that we are thinking about that because we've got, we're never going to live forever. And you want to make sure that we're thinking about succession planning and we're planning for a time to step down. We've been doing this for 16 years. Um, the company is at a crucial stage in terms of, it's a hugely undervalued stock. It's a hugely under, un understood stock because we have been pioneering many things. I want to complete that journey and hand over a solid one Air Asia company to the next leadership. We have depth in leadership. Um, we've been working on it for a long time. And uh, when we hand over, we hand over a, a company that hopefully the next leader will make it even stronger. Um, and so it's good that we're thinking about it. I think that's good corporate governance. But we're not ready to hang our cap up just yet. I'm still wearing it.